Daniel chapter 6. In Daniel chapter 6, we read of an event in history that many of us have uh, read about and studied for many, many years. A study of a part of Daniel's life which exhibited among many uh, examples that of a commitment to following God and being faithful to God and a desire to remain faithful to God uh, despite any uh, untoward consequences. In Daniel chapter 6, we read that uh, Daniel was placed in a lion's den for disobeying the law of the land. We read of a plot against Daniel because of his obedience to God, how he was entrapped by those around him who, for evil reasons, whatever they may have been, were to entrap or ensnare him and to cause him harm. We see how the law of the land did not protect him. In fact, the law of the land that had been passed in this particular example was intended to hurt him, yet he chose to obey God rather than man. We see that though in this land uh, he was not offered the benefit of protection as he should have. But God offered the protection that he needed. And the evidence of faithfulness on behalf of Daniel and the evidence of God's reward and protection led to others seeing the truth about God. And just this one example, uh, one of many, is worthy of our study because of how it is very applicable to us today. So we'll begin in verse 1, Daniel chapter 6, beginning in verse 1. We'll read down through verse 10. The Bible says, It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom, and over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give account unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they should find none occasion nor fault for as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Then said these men, We shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king and said thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes, the counselors, the captains, have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man of thirty days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing, that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows being open in his chamber, toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day, and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he had always done, as he had done aforetime. In this particular part of our text, we see the plot to entrap or to ensnare Daniel, as it was uh, uh, upon occasion of Daniel being in a right relationship with God at this particular time, having uh, found favor with the king, and the king... Uh, rightly recognizing the benefit of having a godly man like Daniel with him and on his side uh, places him in a position of prominence and perhaps for jealousy and, and a, a host of other reasons, many of these other individuals sought to bring him down. Uh, 
And as they looked for a reason to bring him down, they noted that Daniel had no faults against him, against Darius. In fact, uh, Daniel uh, was a faithful servant loyal to the king Darius, had been very helpful to Darius, uh, and as long as uh, Darius wasn't doing anything that opposed the will of God, uh, no doubt in my mind that God would have continued to be with Daniel, his faithful servant, and that, that uh, by allowing Daniel to be a servant of his in his kingdom, Darius would continue to be blessed as well. These men, these princes and presidents, come to Darius because they see that there's no way that uh, they can find any fault against Daniel with regard to the law that had existed on the books of the land. And it gives to us uh, a, a picture of a man who wasn't seeking to disobey the king, was he? Daniel wasn't looking for ways to disobey the law of the land. Daniel was very loyal to the king. Daniel was doing his best to help the king. And when godly people do godly things, uh, they are a blessing to the whole nation that they live in, the whole society that they live in. The Proverbs writer talks about how righteousness exalts a nation, but reproach, uh, but evil or sin is a reproach to any people. When a society contains individuals who are simply trying to do good and do things that are right and to obey God, they are doing all many number of things that can help society. They are putting others above themselves. They are seeking to help those who are in need. They are seeking peace and all of those things are beneficial to society and so when the more people we have doing things that are right with God the better a society is going to be that has those types of individuals in it societies fall when they start doing things that are not godly that's when societies fall because people are looking out for their own interest as opposed to doing good for others and they are not seeking to do things in accordance with God's law. These men saw occasion uh, against Daniel and they could find none, except they knew that he was also faithful to the God in heaven, the only God in heaven. In fact, they knew that it was his faithfulness to God that had actually led him to this position in the kingdom. And so they go to the king and they seek to have the king sign a law and they appeal to the king's uh, arrogance and pride and state that uh, no one should kneel before any god except Darius or put anyone above Darius in the kingdom for 30 days. Interestingly here, uh, the king allows his arrogance uh, to accept this bold lie, right? Uh, in verse 7, the Bible says, All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes and the counselors and the captains have consulted together. I wonder which of them went to Daniel and asked Daniel what his opinion was. <laughs> no, we know all the presidents of the kingdom, the governors, the princes, the counselors and the captains, not all the people that were involved in this uh, leadership of this nation consulted Daniel. And had they told the king that Daniel had been left out, perhaps the, the king would have, not, uh, had, ha, would have considered not signing this, knowing that a lot of the blessings that Darius benefited from was knowing that he was doing some things that were uh, pleasing to God's people. And so this great lie comes before the king. They appeal to perhaps his, his pride and, and uh, his position as king and ask him to sign a decree that according to the law of the Medes and Persians, verse 8, could not be altered. It's, it is in one sense appreciative. Uh, we, can be, we can appreciate how they looked at law. That law was not something that could be willy-nilly, that it was something that should be appreciated and it was something that could do good. That's the reason they made it where it would not be altered, right? So that, there, that it would be just and fair for everybody, that it wouldn't be, uh, that justice wouldn't be meted out based upon just mere opinions of others, but that it would be applied equally. However, the king at any time 
could have passed a law that contradicted this law in order to uh, keep Daniel from having to go into the, uh, the lion's den. However, he knew that after this, that would show more weakness than it would have strength. And perhaps because of his desire to show uh, his strength over the kingdom, he chose not to do so. But Darius signs the writing, and the Bible tells us that Daniel knew of the writing and knew of the signing, uh, but he did not stop doing what he knew was right to do. Having come out of, or having uh, uh, been faithful to God in the law of Moses, he continued to do things that uh, he knew would be pleasing to God. Obviously, his people had been taken captive. And the ability to worship God exactly as God would have them to do was almost impossible because of their enslavement. But Daniel was doing the best that he possibly could, and he did this daily. He went into his house, his windows being open in the chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he had done aforetime. Nothing new. Once again, he wasn't seeking to disobey the king. He was simply seeking to do what he had, had been doing all along. Unfortunately, we find that good men are sometimes mistreated by their fellow men. And sometimes it's because of our desire to put God above all else. Daniel was not going to stop being faithful just to appease wicked men. And it's a lesson for us, is it not? The Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 21 that we're to prove all things and to hold fast to that which is good. We are not to appease the wicked whether it brings us harm or not. We are to prove all things and to hold fast to that which is good. In Proverbs 11 verse 3, the Proverbs writer says, The integrity of the upright shall guide them, but the perverseness of transgressors shall destroy them. We should always seek to remain a person of integrity, being guided by truth, not by any ways uh, a means that can cause us to, be, to receive gain in this life and this life alone. Christians must make sure that we remain faithful today just as Daniel wanted to remain faithful to God even despite this, this law that passed. In Revelation 2 verse 10, the Bible tells us that there will be individuals who were persecuted in that end of first century at the, uh, as Jerusalem would be destroyed, persecuted financially, persecuted even to death. But God told them, don't give in to the persecution. Be faithful even if it means your life. Be faithful unto death because there is a crown of righteousness that awaits. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 through verse 8. Paul says, I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give, it, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearance, or his appearing. And so it is important for us to remain faithful to God despite the wickedness of men in our lives today and despite uh, any opportunity that is put into law to cause us harm or to cause us to not do what God would have us to do. Sadly, there are individuals that because of their own evil deeds and their own wickedness and their own thoughts rather than change their thoughts to be in harmony with God would prefer that God's will not be heard at all <laughs> and so the silencing of truth is more important to them than the truth itself the truth that could save them from their sins and perhaps that may be part of the problem they don't want to be told that what they are doing is sin and so to uh, ignore the sin, to hide the sin as they would see it, 
They seek to cause harm to the individuals who are proclaiming the truth. In similar fashion as Cain with Abel. Cain's guilt was one of the things that led him to kill his brother Abel. And all Abel had done was follow God's law, been faithful to God's will. And God told Cain, had you been faithful to my will, I would have accepted your sacrifice, your worship, just as much as I accepted Abel's. God is no respecter of persons. God wants all people to come to a knowledge of the truth so that they might be saved. But individuals with hate in their heart, rather than repenting of their sins and coming to uh, a submission to the law of the, of the Lord, seek to hinder the law of the Lord and seek to hurt those or harm those who would continue to remind the world that there is a God in heaven and that God is in control. In verse 11 through verse 17 of Daniel, as we read in verse 10, Daniel went about his business as normal. Once again, not seeking to purposefully disobey the king. He simply went about doing what he had been doing all along. Then these men assembled, verse 11, and, making fa uh, and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. What a shocking sight that must have been for them to have seen Daniel doing exactly what he did every day prior. In verse 12, they came near and they spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Hast thou not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a petition of any god or man within 30 days, save of thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, The thing is true according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which altereth not. It intrigues me that they decided to make this law good for 30 days. Was the king not worth worshiping for more than 30 days? After 31 days, would there be another God that would be better than Darius? It's really shameful when you think uh, how people act and respond so irrationally. It didn't even make sense. But we also know that these individuals desire to harm Daniel or to entrap and to ensnare Daniel when they come in verse 12 and in rather going to Daniel about this law, they went straight to the king. It was their plot all along, right, to cause him harm. Verse 13, they answered and said before the king that Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of, uh, captivity of Judah, regardeth not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but maketh his petition three times a day. Now there's part truth to this, and there's part lie. Once again, Daniel had never tried to disobey or be disloyal to Darius. And so it was false that Daniel had no regard for the king. But it was true that Daniel disobeyed this particular law, and the reason being it was in contradiction to God's law. And he chose God rather than man. Acts chapter 5, verse 32. We ought to obey God rather than man. Then the king, verse 14, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with Daniel? No. It says he was sore displeased with himself. And set his heart on Daniel to deliver him and labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. He could have delivered him. He could have signed another piece of paper that made that previous signing null and void, old. But perhaps that would have made him look weak to all these other princes, presidents, governors, counselors. Then these men assembled, verse 15, unto the king and said unto the king, Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and Persians is that no decree nor statute which the king establisheth may be changed. It may not be changed but it can be superseded. It has to be superseded. Things change. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. 
Now, when we look back at this law of the Medes and the Persians, it's interesting too. Where did they get such an idea that law couldn't change or shouldn't change? Was it from the people of Israel and the people of Judah who had received a law that would not change? <laughs> that God had delivered to Moses a law and that law was set in stone, literally and figuratively, and that it would not change? Is that not where perhaps this idea that law was to be respected and not changed? That it had come from God himself. The difference here is that the, man, uh, that, the, that the men making laws are apt to make bad laws. Right? That's why men's laws can be changed. God's law can't be changed. It should not be changed because God made it right the first time. God never makes mistakes. That's the big difference. God would have never done something so foolish. So Darius here, intriguingly, realizes his only way out, or what he thought his only way out was, and that was God had been with Daniel before and he'll probably be with him again. <laughs> he was right on that, wasn't he? In verse 17, the Bible says, A stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his lords that the per purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. In order to save the face of Darius and to appeal to this notion that the law of the Medes and the Persians could not be changed, this punishment had to go forth. As horrible as the law was, as silly as the law was, as worthless as that law was, a law that was going to end in weeks anyway, this punishment had to go through. Christians have individuals who want to do us harm. As pointed out before, these individuals have only evil in their hearts. And Christians who want to do what's right are going to have to face the consequences sometimes of the, of the fact that evil men exist. In 2 Timothy 3 verse 12, the Bible says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. In Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 5, Verse 10, Jesus said, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Daniel being one such example, right? And so if we find ourselves being persecuted we can find ourselves being put in the same category as Daniel, and that's a pretty good company to be in. In verse 44, Matthew chapter 5, Jesus says, I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that cause you to uh, curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. I wonder if Daniel praying that day as he prayed often every day prayed that God would somehow allow him to soften the hearts of those wicked men who had brought such a wicked law into the land. We hope to have, been, we hope to have such influence on individuals so that such laws don't get passed in the first place. In 1 Peter chapter 3, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 14, But and if you suffer for righteousness' sake, 
Happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear, having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation or behavior in Christ. For it is better if the will of God be so that you suffer for well-doing than for evil doing. There are individuals who want good people to suffer. There are individuals who uh, are saddened initially by the knowledge that what they are doing is contrary to the Bible. But rather than seeking to change their own minds and hearts, they seek to punish those who bring it up. In Daniel chapter 6, the rest of the chapter here, beginning of verse 18, Then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither were instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. He was not in the mood to be entertained. He was not in the mood to enjoy his evening. He couldn't sleep. He was restless. And so in the morning, verse 19, the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste to the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions? And then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angel and has shut the lions' mouths that they have not hurt me for as much as before him. Innocency was found in me and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Once again, Daniel's intent and purpose was not to disobey the law of the land. His intent was to do what God said to do, be faithful to God. Being faithful to God in return would make society a better place. Verse 23, Then was the king exceeding glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no manner of hurt was found upon him because he believed in his God. Daniel was saved miraculously from the mouths of the lions on that evening. And God doesn't work miraculously today. It may be the case that we do receive some physical harm, bodily harm, for remaining faithful to God. But ultimately we know if we are faithful to God that the reward is in heaven. That the reward is the ability to remain in the presence of God for all of eternity. To receive that crown of life at the end. Those who are children of God have reasons to be confident that God will reward and God will save because he's done so over and over and over again. And these individuals who were saved physically and in the flesh, like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego as well in the book of Daniel, were no doubt thankful to God for their salvation from the fiery furnace and from the mouths of the lions. But no amount of satisfaction compared to the salvation of eternity. The salvation of their past sins in this life so that they could live with God in heaven. We have reason to be competent of God's protection. God has protected his people from the very, very beginning. Those who would be faithful to him have always been rewarded. In Ephesians chapter 6, Beginning verse 10, Paul writes to Ephesus, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and 
having the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. We prepare ourselves to fend off the armies, spiritual armies of the wicked, of the devil. And we do so not necessarily to protect us physically, right? The armament that Paul told us to put on was not to protect us physically, but to protect us spiritually. <laughs> to protect our minds, to protect our hearts, to protect us from doing things that would be against God's will. And so bringing us away from God which ultimately is the goal of those wicked individuals, right? To seek to tear down individuals, to destroy their faith, and to stop their mouths, right? And of course, as we finish this, the text in verse 24, the king commanded and they brought those men who had accused Daniel and they cast them into the den of lions, them, their children, their wives, and their lions, had the mastery of them and break all their bones in pieces or ever they came at the bottom of the den. Sadly, we read that not just those men who accused Daniel falsely were cast into the den of lions, but their families. Some people would say, well, that's not fair. Those individuals didn't do anything wrong. Well, we're not told exactly what they did. But if God punished them, he is a righteous judge. Their children, their wives may have consented to this evil action. They may have been a part of it. They may have played a role. But if they were punished, it was because God knew they were wrong in something. He, didn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't punish innocent people. Then King Darius, verse 25, wrote unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and steadfast forever in his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be even unto the end. He delivereth and rescueth, and he worketh signs and wonders in heaven and in earth, who had delivered Daniel from the power of the lions, so this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. So here's another decree that can't be altered, but it totally went against the decree he had just signed, didn't it? This decree says, you know, the, the last decree that said you can't pray to any god other than the king, the idea of putting the king up in, on the same position Darius recognized his foolishness, submitted that he was nothing compared to the God that Daniel worshipped. And the decree said that in his kingdom men would tremble and fear before God. When people are faithful to God, we can bring about good things. Laws can be changed in a good way, just as they can be changed in a bad way, can't they? Daniel's faithfulness the evidence that was exhibited by Daniel being saved from the lion's den brought about a change in the law of the land that would benefit how many people now who didn't have to fear of persecution because if they wanted to worship the God of heaven. In fact, the king here gives them his permission, though they didn't need it, to worship the God of heaven. Daniel's faithfulness brought about a belief in God on the, on the part of Darius. And the Bible gives us plenty of evidence that there is a God and that He is worthy of our praise and honor and adoration and our worship. In Psalm 19... Verse 1... 
The Bible says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day utter a speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. And them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of the chamber, and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. The creation of God cries out his existence. The earth exists. No one can deny that. The earth can't possibly have created itself. That's scientifically impossible. It can't come from nothing. That's scientifically impossible. And the Bible teaches and science would teach that that which is created had to be created by something greater than itself. The creation proves there is a God. And that's why the Bible tells us that the fool says there is no God. And he says there is no God to his own demise. In Romans chapter 1 verse 20, Paul said the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. There is more than sufficient evidence that God is and that we should have faith in God and that faith should lead, that should lead us to be obedient just as Daniel was obedient. In Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, Hebrews 11 verse 6, Without faith it is impossible to please God, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We need not to doubt God. We can continue to have faith and confidence in God and know that He is and know that He rewards those who diligently seek Him. God is looking for more Daniels. God is looking for more individuals who will submit their lives to Him, who will seek Him first. Matthew chapter 6. Seek Him first and His kingdom. Those who put God first in their lives, their priorities will then fall right in line as God would have them to do. If we seek first to please God, we're going to hear what He says. The Bible tells us faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. Romans 10 verse 17. Faith leads us to act in obedience. Faith without works of obedience is dead, James says in James 2 verse 17. It leads us to repent of our past sins. Confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Savior of the world, and to be immersed in water, to have our past sins washed away, Acts 22, verse 16. God adds all those individuals to His body, His church, among the saved, Acts 2, verse 47, where we live a life of faithfulness to God, looking forward to that day when Jesus returns, or the breath leaves us in this life and we find ourselves in paradise if we are obedient to God. And society benefits as we continue to do what God says is right. Those individuals who have done right in the past, uh, those obeyed those initial acts, but have separated themselves from God through disobedience can come back home. God wants all individuals to be saved. By turning away from sin, individuals can ask God to forgive them and He is faithful and just to do that. 1 John 1 verse 7. And so if we can assist you in any way this morning, we're here to help as we stand and sing. I've wandered far away from God.